atomic batteries to power. Turbines to speed. Roger. Ready to move out. You ever dance with the devil and pay him in mind? This town needs an enema. Riddle me this. Riddle me that. Who's afraid of the big black bat? We're both in the ashes. You have my permission to die. This is your liberation. Your mother warned me about getting into cars with strange men. This isn't a car. 20 years in Gotham, how many good guys are left? How many stayed that way? He has the power to wipe out the entire human race. Tell me, do you bleed? You will. I want you to tell all your friends about me. What are you? He's a silent guardian. A watchful protector. Dark night. I'm Batman. Let the games begin. Welcome to the Batman on Film Podcast. Here are your hosts, Bill Jet Rainey and Rick Shu. Hey now, you are listening to Volume 2, Episode 81 of the Batman on Film Podcast. BOF is the sponsor, as well as a proud member of the Batman Podcast Network. Check out all the shows at BatmanPodcastNetwork.com. I am the host of the BOF Podcast, as well as the founder of Batman on Film, Bill Jet Ramey. With me today is BOF Podcast co-host, Rick Shu. Good morning. Hello, Rick. I want to do my good morning Vietnam thing like Robin Williams did, but I can't. I just couldn't quite muster it. Uh, well, I was uh, I was up late, Bill. I was I was up late working on my. Uh, well, we'll we'll get to you're, it in a moment. You're up late. Plug it all the time because I see you tweet and it's like six hours ago and it's like eight in the morning. So I'm like, what's he up at two o'clock in the morning for? Well, so. that's that's on that's on rare and some of that. Sometimes that's. I've gone to bed at ten and I wake up at two or three and I'm just wide awake and I'm just said screw it I get I get on my phone and fart around. <laughs> that's that's nine times out of ten that's what that is. All right. Also is one of the two great BOF roundtablers, Justin Kowalski. Ryan um, Ryan is a daddy and cannot make it this morning as uh, as expected being a new dad so uh <laughs> that is why ryan is not here he has a little girl so little laura so what's the hey, update How, how's everybody she had, doing? she had a birth well she had a birthday uh, same birthday as somebody else too who was it me She's brother close. me yeah, yeah. Justin. that's right another july 5th baby so ryan's daughter has the same birthday as justin's hey. i think that's just freaking cool man i love that two of my kids are july birthdays oh really yeah, my daughter is the is today actually, and uh, Jake, the youngest, is on the tenth. Oh, wow. so he'll he'll be sixteen in a couple of couple of days, and he will uh, get his be getting his driver's license. So that should be fun. Wow! And I and I say that with tongue firmly planted in cheek when I say it will be fun. Um, he's born on the same day as my mom, actually. So, wow. Batman on film, authoritative, <laughs> definitive. The Dad Gum original, Rick. Throwing another, I got, I, I just Dad I, Gum I gotta, it. I gotta use Dad Gum. I was Great. around a bunch of. Uh, my mom had a procedure in the hospital yesterday, and there was a bunch of extended family that was there, and I haven't seen them in a long time. And it's 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 those kind of folk, man. It's East Texas, old school country people and i heard dad gum it like three times yesterday oh you know what we need to do a whole show on different texas dialects because there are there's a texas accent and then there are different versions of the texas accent depending on where you're at because southeast sure. texas texas accent is is different than northeast texas accent I mean, it's just it's 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 Pretty, well, and if, you, and if you grow up in Dallas or in yeah. Austin, you you know, very strong possibility you don't even have one. That's true. Or he, yeah, any of the even Houston, neutral. you know. So I think I'm kind of pretty much neutral, I guess. I don't yeah, 
So there's oh, some people can. that some people will hear me talk and say, "Oh, dude, you're Texan." I'm like, "Really?" And then others are like, "I can't, I can't believe you're from Texas." Yeah, I, get I can't this. hear it. I get both of those constantly. It's crazy. My, like, uh, I said, like, so Matthew McConaughey sounds like he's from Texas. Because believe he, me, if I sounded like I was from Texas, I, I'd hey, play yes. it. I would be Ricky Joe Shoe the actor. And that uh, is, and his is north. That's northeast Texas accent right there. If you want to yeah, know what a well, northeast, like, uh, Longview. He's Longview. Yeah. Yeah. So if you want to know what a Northeast Texas accent sounds like, it is it is him, Matthew McConaughey, for sure. Um, all right, all right, all right. Oh, that's right, uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, and Some believe it or not, place. I've lost a lot of my accent after I moved to, to here to the greater Houston area and married a Minnesotan. So because uh, I can hear my, my people down home when they talk, I'm like, oh, my God. That used to sound like that. They sound like a bunch of hicks. <laughs> no, no offense to my, hey. my my golden triangle people, but you know, and they'll and they'll and they'll tell me, oh, you 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 know, you sound like a Yankee, and I'm like, but you know, then people hear me go, oh, you got a got a Texas accent. So anyway, was that, there was that jackass that was attacking us on. Yeah, I just call him a jackass. Live with it. Anyway, that some jackass on YouTube was attacking you that one time. Oh it, really? Yeah, remember that guy? We all he was did a video. I don't I don't wanna I don't want to bring him into the Oh, did we make fun of it? But I just remember him saying Bill shit kicker ring. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, can't, never... I can't lie, that made me kind of giggle snort when he said that. I mean I, have, I, have, I mean look. it pissed me off because you're like one of my best friends. I, I could have killed him, but it was but it was kind of funny, you know. <laughs> it is funny. It is funny. I will say this. I have wore cowboy boots. I have never kicked any shit in my life. I will say, I, I will say that. Um, I've told you guys the story on this show, but just I'll, I'll just say it again. When I was bartending at Saddle Ranch in West Hollywood in Sun, on Sunset Boulevard, I, I was the guy from Texas, and there was a riding bull in there, and the manager was so excited. He was like, oh, cool, we got a guy from Texas. Here's to show us how it's done. And I, I looked over at it, and I said it with a straight face. I went, I have never seen one of those in my life. <laughs> Never, I've never, I've never been to Billy Bob's in Fort Worth where they do riding bulls. Oh. And uh, there I was slinging drinks in West Hollywood, and I see my first uh, electric bull. That's a true story. Yes, they thought they you had Bud Davis in the house, right? Now, now, don't get me wrong. I grew up in Mesquite, fifteen twenty minutes outside of Dallas, and there is the you know the infamous the Mesquite Rodeo, and I've been there a few times. And but there's no riding bulls at the Mesquite Rodeo, yo. Those are real bulls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, I was disappointed in 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 Texas. There wasn't a single ten gallon hat. No, no public, you know, carrying of of arms. It was just a just a regular city, right? <laughs> I mean, you could have been in L.A. for all I knew, you know, just yeah, cleaner. We, that day that we spent at Clyde Warren Park in downtown Dallas, I was hoping that maybe there would be some random guy. But next time you're in the Dallas area, Justin, next time you come out this way, I, we 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 have to have a day where I take you out to Fort Worth. Oh, you got to bring him to Fort Worth. I got to take him to Fort Worth because that will put him. We'll go to the stockyards, and I swear, yeah. dude, you'll 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 feel like you're in Texas, and it's because yeah. thirty yeah. minute drive from my house. It's not like it's four hours away. There's that great scene in Pee Wee's Big Adventure where he's in Texas and he's trying to find the Alamo and all that stuff. <laughs> and she's all, "You're in Texas," and he, he just screams on the phone, "The stars at night are yeah. shining bright," and everyone just starts clapping. And I was, I I wanted that. Yes. Pee Wee's awesome. Oh man, I love that movie. Oh, and also, yeah. yeah, the Alamo is like in the middle of downtown. San Antonio. It's not so. It's it's the most like, underwhelming thing you'll ever. And see. there's no basement apparently. So, I mean, it's just it's in downtown San Antonio. People think it's like, you know, way it's shown in the John Wayne Alamo film, or mm -hmm. you know, the more current update. You know, out on the prairie and 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 central Texas. No, it's downtown in San Antonio. I should have checked that out when I was stuck there. So I can yeah. take you around the corner. Where, I can I can take you around the corner and show you where Ozzy peed on it. Hey, there you go. <laughs> Yeah, remember that bill, Ozzy yeah. Pete on the Alamo, uh, and he yeah. was banned from he got Texas for, like for that. Yeah, ten years, that. something like that. Uh, uh, anyway, yeah. wow, is this a Batman show? We're talking yeah, about yeah. Ozzy pissing on the Alamo. Yeah, so there we go. Show. Which is which um, is actually more entertaining than the show Gotham. Hey, Anybody? there you go. Hey, yeah. hey. Anybody? All right, I'm here all day. All right, all right, all right. What we're gonna do is um, just to give everybody an update. We were going to do our greatest best comic book superhero movie scene or segment our first show to get to the elite eight uh, we got lots of nominations and it's going to be tough for us to get to eight but we're going to do that we're going to oh, have yeah. 
We're going to have, you know, we're going to have our personal favorites we'll lobby for. We're going to have probably have to do some bargaining and some debating and talking about it. But we want it, we want Ryan to be part of it. So we're going to wait on that. Can, can I just say yeah. one thing on that real quick? Yeah. So, no, I, 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 you sent that email this morning, and my, my first thought was, cool, I agree. Second thought was, we got to still do a show. Yes. Um, so I'm glad we're doing a show, and I'm glad we're waiting on Ryan. So it's a win-win. I do want to just say this. I spent, uh, I was up late last night just just going through YouTube and thinking of a scene, and I'd YouTube it and watch it again. And I swear, doing eight scenes that are your favorite comic book scenes, first of all, it's kind of hard for me not to have them all Batman. And I'll be honest, it's kind of hard for me not to have them all in the Nolan trilogy, because quite frankly, that's a pretty easy task. I could pull eight scenes from those three films and claim them oh, as favorite, and mm-hmm. they would with you. be in the top 15, 20. But it was very difficult. I wanted to share one thing with you guys, or kind of ask a question, is it okay. really a better way to put it? Is, uh, and then we'll we'll move on, because we're going to wait to do the show. But... What is there a particular scene that was really hard for you guys to let go, but you got rid of it? Yeah. Oh man. Because uh-huh. here, here's mine, yeah. and I'll just say it because it's not on my list, and then we'll do the list. Was the opening scene in Batman '89 when he yeah. opens his cape up and the the mugger see him for the first time? Mm-hmm. You hear him speaking for the first time. Yeah, it's in my top ten. Didn't quite make top eight, but man, that was, I love that scene so much. And when that movie first came out, I just remember being in the theater and just, I was, my jaw was on the ground every time that, that was my favorite scene in that movie at that time. And uh, man, that was, that was a hard one to let go. Yeah. It's, oh man, that movie has so much. I just watched that uh, the other night because my son, well, he's all dad. Let's watch a classic. Let's watch Batman with Michael Keaton. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and so what was just great is you get to the end that final scene where he's on top of the tower mm-hmm. and my son paused it he's all dad just take that in that's awesome <laughs> he just started saying this funny thing oh, i love that yeah yeah he, 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 that part's just a really cool i've always loved that scene of just batman and the and the bat signal in the sky and it, what a great way to end that movie i love that part yeah that's yeah. good I do, um, I do well. golly you know what i had to, i had i cut out of my top, I had twelve. I have twelve mm-hmm. bring to the table, and did not make my top twelve. But it 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 pained me significantly to 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 cut it. Is the 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 bat swarming Bruce mm. and Batman begins? Yeah. I, you know. So and then when you, yeah. when you and listen, not to get off on rises or the John Blake stuff, but when you juxtapose that at the end of Rises too, when you know. Yes, the, yeah. the bats are swarming around him, yeah. around Blake. That I, I just I love that full circle. This is going to be a good yeah. dynamic project, and, and you know, and we, listen, we'll probably have to after we do this, since we are Batman on film, do a just top, you know, top eight Batman, top scene. ten, yes. top ten, top ten. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta, that's, we gotta, geez, that's tough to get down to ten. You know, that's a tough, mm-hmm. tough deal. I just you know I want to make it superhero movies because I mean. I had saw. Here's what the, the idea came to my mind because I was, you know, speaking of YouTube, I was doing something and going through YouTube, and then that the uh, the Superman clip from Superman the movie, where um, you know the he saves Lois, the helicopter, all that mm-hmm. came up, and I'm like, that that's that's one of the best comic book movie scenes, period. You know, and and I thought, how you know, how many are there? And I started thinking about, you know, all of them. And I said, this would be a good little deal to do for the on the podcast and and make it part, you know, do a make it a bracket type thing. And golly, I think there were like thirty something nominations. Plus, I got more than that, and just finally had to stop adding them because some of them got a little. I'm like, there's no way that's a, a no way that's a top ten. You know, top eight or whatever scene, and and it's hard because like yeah. okay, Wonder Woman, Man of Steel, and Spider Man Homecoming are three films I I love, right? I, I particularly love Spider Man and Wonder Woman, and really really like Man of Steel. Anyway, but those three films all have a scene that all were they're like in my top ten, fifteen. I just didn't quite make the eight. You know, it's hard when you're doing when you're encompassing everything and you're such a Batman fanatic. But I do have two Superman scenes, but they're from the Chris Reeve era. But mm-hmm. Batman of Steel was really close, so I'm excited to share those with you. And I just kind of had an epiphany too. This, this, this could we could really run with this top ten. I mean, Justin, we could do a Star Wars podcast on our top ten favorite just Star Wars. Oh yeah, you know, yeah, that's great. 
This is this is like just my my juices are pumping right now. It's awesome. Well, but anyway, we'll we'll, yeah. we'll obviously get into all this, and because we we don't want to dive into our list and then and then undermine our uh, our respect for waiting on Ryan. But anyway, yeah. it was it was daunting. It's a daunting task. Is, but I, I'm I'm not going to look at my list again. F it. It is what it is. I'm going to marry myself to it because if I start thinking about it again, I'm going to start moving things around. So I'm just gonna I've got it saved on a document. It's in a folder, and. uh We'll get to it in a couple of weeks. I'll just I'll tease this. I'll say that I have two Superman movie nominate nominees on my list, and one is of course from Superman the movie. The other is from Superman Returns. What? Which I actually I actually like Man of Steel better than Superman Returns, but I had a hard time coming up with iconic a great iconic scene in that. And Man of Steel, even though I I do like that film a lot. So okay, we're getting off on a tangent. Well, no, but hey, let's, <laughs> yeah, let's yeah. Just real, but real fast, there's something to be said for that because I'll I'll tease this in my top eight. There's a scene from Spider Man Two, and I love Spider Man Two. I actually really like Spider Man Homecoming quite a bit better. Like it's a Spider Man Two to me is the distant second favorite Spider Man movie, but it is second. But anyway, but as just an isolated scene. I'm going through Homecoming in my head. I've only seen it once, but I, you know, I, I remember movies well anyway. But I'm like, you know, there's so many great scenes, but an iconic top eight scene, no. Top ten favorite superhero movie for me, yes. For scene, no, you can't beat this one particular scene in Spider Man Two. It's mm-hmm. just so awesome. I can't wait to share it. Well, speaking of Spider Man Homecoming, Justin has seen it today, so we're not going to talk about that. We, you know what, we may just bust out a. Spider-Man Homecoming podcast. Once I know Ryan, yeah. I want to talk about it, so we can wait. We got plenty of. Uh, you know. Well, I'm going to cheat and do an early plug here. Uh, my my official review is up on on Batman on film, and I was actually yes. I was actually I call it the official review because uh, it is. I actually <laughs> reviewed it. Bill Bill reviewed it after I did, and uh, I gave it an A plus. So if you are on the fence about going to see it, just go see it. I saw it yesterday. Uh, I missed this press screening. It was the same night as when Rick saw it. Uh, my wife announced that Rachel had major surgery. It was brutal, too. It was brutal and it was almost six hours. But she's doing well. And I just, I mean, it really was uh, like a hop, skip, and jump to get from uh, Herman Memorial Hospital in the medical center in Houston to where the screening was. But I, I didn't. I, I just couldn't. I couldn't leave her. It was, you know, the first night of the surgery, so I stayed there with her. Uh, Rick reviewed it. Got, got, that's on Batman on film. You can see Joanne Hyde's review. She liked it as well. And then I posted. I, and I said, don't take this as a review because it's not fair. It's just, you know, what I thought uh, after I saw it. And so, if you want to read that, it's on Batman on film as well. And I'm sure after Justin sees it, we'll all discuss. <clears throat> you know, Bill, I, our. our uh, Returning guest Zachy Hassan, he's he's really on the same page as, as you on it, which kind of mm-hmm. surprised me. I thought he was going to love it as much as I did, but mm-hmm. the fact that you guys both really like it is cool because, um, I mean, we're all going to have a, you know our our opinions are going to vary. Yeah. I mean, obviously we, we we make that pretty clear on this panel because the Dark Knight Rises certainly has a scene yeah. on my top eight, and my guess is it, probably not on Justin's. Is that fair to say, Justin? <laughs> I've seen, but anyway, back to back back to Spider Man Homecoming. I don't know anybody um, that has seen it that just doesn't like it, and it's uh, it's it's really strong. So I all I said, and I said this before we started recording. I said uh, I really liked it. I, I think I gave it an A. I, I said, but it's not in my top ten uh, all time comic book movies, and uh, it's not it's not. It's not Spider Man Two level for me. I, I think that's one of the. I think Spider Man Two is one of the greatest. So do I. Comic book films. So do I. And you know what? I will say this about Homecoming. It's made me excited for to see where they take his little, his little, you know, neighborhood Spider Man universe. Because yeah. well, anyway, I like. Sure. And by the way, I, well, we can't really get into that. But that is no. just all that is awesome. By the way, yeah. And um, I'll, but you know what's exciting for me personally also is that. The last two films in a row, Wonder Woman, Spider Man, freaking love both of them, and it just feels like I'm on a high right now. Like God, and then and then and then I'm, it's weird, guys. And I, this is not I'm not trying to like inadvertently shit on Justice League. I'm really not. But there's there's those two films, and I'm like, okay, Last Jedi, it's your turn, man. Let's let's end this year strong. And so I put that on Twitter, and somebody's like, dude, you're forgetting a movie. I'm like, oh yeah. 
I'm just I'm trying to get excited about Justice League. I think right now I'm just more nervous about it. But if Justice League is great, which we hope it is, and then Star Wars is strong, man, what a hell of a year! For, you yeah, know, that'll and, be uh, yeah. Thor Ragnarok, man. That thing, yeah, yeah. and Thor, you know, that's. Awesome. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, I'm not I'm quite for that. Not a big Thor guy personally, but I, I will certainly go see it. Um, but you know, Thor, Thor's not really on my radar per se. But mm. um, but I, again, I'll go see it for sure. Dude, just that trailer with the with the Led Zeppelin and the Hulk. Oh man, I'm sold on Zeppelin, dude. Don't get me wrong. The Hulk, yeah, that Hulk thing was pretty awesome. The, the yeah. Hulk thing is freaking. I mean, dude, that 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 cat is a charming sob. Yes, <laughs> you yeah. know we work together. You know that's <laughs> that's that's awesome. There's no doubt about it. Uh, just uh, everything else about it. Just uh, anyway, I'll go see it. Yeah. All right. So well, let's get to the show here. Um, <laughs> Thirty minutes in. <laughs> yeah. What are you talking about? This is the show. This is the show. This is what the show is. This is just us. I would imagine. Um, yeah. Quick update. Wonder Woman is now the uh, highest grossing DCEU film yeah. of all time. Um, not not the highest grossing DC film, film period. but it's Now, let's, let's as, clarify that because a lot of people I'm seeing on Twitter, it's not... Uh, beating Dark Knight trilogy or Dark Knight, Dark Knight Rises numbers. It's the DCU, no. but that's great. Don't get me wrong. I'm just not. I'm, I'm just. That is an important clarification, though. The Dark Knight is number two, and Dark Knight Rises is number four on the top of the highest grossing. Um, Wonder Woman is at eleven at the at the moment, but it has surpassed Man of Steel. It has surpassed Suicide Squad. It has surpassed. BBS domestically. Mm -hmm. uh, it's got also, it is. And to be fair, back, she's also yeah. banned a couple of countries too. So, you know, I don't know how yeah. significant that is, but every little percentage point counts. Wait, is this domestic or worldwide? Uh, domestic. That was domestic. He, yeah, he, worldwide is, yeah. He said worldwide, domestic. I was okay. just trying to paint It a is picture. domestic. Yeah, that, that is domestic. It so, is, in other words, Justin, BBS is ahead of Wonder Woman globally. Yeah. But I was just moment, saying, yeah, at be, the moment, fair. She's also banned in a couple of countries, and that you know that could change the needle a little bit. I don't. I just. I don't know how many. Yeah. How where, much? Where, of, where I don't is know how much of the global sales for BBS came from Lebanon or wherever. But where still, did it? Where did it? Where did it not play in? Lebanon. Played, Lebanon for sure. There was another country as well, wasn't there? Well, it went to China, right? Okay, so yeah. I don't have that, and I don't want to Google because it'll take up precious airtime. If I'm if I'm not correct on that, I apologize. Now I think, I think it was I just think Lebanon that it was banned from. Was it? Okay. okay. Yeah. Maybe so. Maybe it's just Lebanon. Well, if you're listening, Google and tell me I'm an idiot. But I think I think it's two. But maybe maybe not. Yeah. All right. So she would twenty more people would have seen it in Lebanon. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it, I'll I'll go ahead and just just show myself out, guys. I mean, I. It's got seven hundred and twenty-two uh, million worldwide. Wow! As the moment, and it deserves it. It, it needs what about a hundred million plus to get past BBS? That's mm -hmm. look that's here. Probably, it's possible. Look, BBS has its things I love about it. I'm not. It is what it is. We've we've discussed it. But Wonder Woman as a film is superior. And it deserves it, and I'm very proud of that movie and what they yes. did with it. Wonder Woman is is it's it's better than BBS, totally. Yes, yeah, and that's By okay. Far, that's okay, that it is. There's nothing wrong with that. I, I would like every film to be better than the last, anyway. That's that's a pretty, pretty cool place to be. All right, so All right. you know, yay, go Wonder Woman, kick some more ass at the box office. Uh, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go see that Dagum thing. There's a Dagum again. I'm gonna go see it again before. It's theater run is over. I need to see that in the theater. Later. I haven't done a double feature at a theater in so many years, and mm -hmm. I, I used to, I used to love doing double features. Guys, love it. Yes. Um, you know, back we're, we're, we're old now. We just want to, but yeah, you don't two have hours. To get the hell out of there. Movies you know? are longer now. <laughs> you know, like ninety minute movies don't exist anymore. But man, I'd love to go see Spider Man and Wonder Woman back to back one afternoon if I could. Uh, that's a, all right. That'd be good. All right. And uh, Justin is going to be. We got a giveaway. Oh yeah, so I'll, I'll own Justin. So go ahead and tease that, Justin, and then we'll we'll tell how tell people how they can win at the at the end here. So go ahead. Yeah. So uh, next Saturday here in uh, beautiful downtown historic Riverside, California, they are going to have a Adam West tribute celebration. They're going to be playing the Batman '66 
movie inside the Fox Theater, which is amazing. It's an amazing theater out here. It's where they do all the the shows and plays and all that type of stuff. But uh, what they're going to do is have it's going to be a big event. They're going to have a DJ and costume contest and and more stuff to come. And so I was talking to uh, the event organizers, and they are really excited that we're going to be down there. So I'll be filming and stuff there. So I'll be there uh, recording some stuff for Batman on film. But we have five uh, pairs of tickets to be given away. And I'll tell you how to do that at the end of the show. So that's going to be a fun time. And um, I'm excited that uh, when I heard about it, I was excited that my city was doing that. I was like, well, that's going to be an awesome uh, yeah, event. That all. So, um, so yeah. So come on down. Rick, did you know, I, you know, the, the premiere for that movie, the real premiere in 1966 was in Austin, Texas. Really? I didn't even know that until yes. recently. Yes. yes. I yes. want to say, and someone, if you're listening – uh, shoot me an email, or whatever, or tweet me, whatever. Um, I think Austin's doing something or did something. Sh- uh, sh- they are they screening it again at the same same theater, or I I don't know. Oh, that's cool. I want to I want to say Austin did something or is going to do something. So, if you're listening, you know more about that. Let me know, or if I'm completely wrong, let me know that as well. So, and and since we're talking about Austin for the second time in 35 minutes, let me also just say this, just to remind everybody, our next uh, Batman on Film watch party will be for Justice League, and it will be in Austin, and uh, that's Saturday. Do you, do you know the date, Bill? By chance? Yes, yeah, it's gonna be the 18th of November. 18th of November. That's a Saturday. And we're going to do an early screening, like a yes. 3 o'clock or 4 o'clock. Yeah. That way Bill doesn't turn into a pumpkin and go back to his hotel room at 8. Yeah. And that way we can go out and have a uh, – there's top five best nightlife cities in the U.S. Is, is <laughs> once in Austin. So we're going to have a good time. Now, hey, Tom's this, coming out for that, right? Didn't Tom, he say I he's coming? In Spain. Tom, Tom McQuellen, he's in um, – He's in Spain right now, dude, yeah. and uh, he's supposed to come. He needs to grab Mark Byrne too. That that cat needs to join him. For, you know. Anyway, but yeah, Tom said that if he doesn't blow all his money in Spain, he's gonna. <laughs> oh, <laughs> come on! He needs to come out here. That's that'd be awesome. Oh man! Uh, actually, uh, a good friend of ours uh, live in Austin. Couple, and uh, they brought they bought a property, Rick, on Sixth Street. On uh, West Sixth Street, not not too far from the, I guess the more residential part. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. If you know Austin, you know what I'm talking about. And it's like a loft type place. And they're not going to live there. They're just, they're just going to, um, I, I guess, do like Airbnb stuff with it. And uh, so we're staying there that that weekend. So I'll be right there, oh, nice. and almost almost in the heart of. Um, where everything at is at in Austin. It, it is going to be at the Alamo Draft House on South Lamar. Not the not the original Alamo Draft House. It's that's downtown downtown, but just just a hair south of downtown on South Lamar. So uh, that's where it'll be. There's a I have a page on Batman on Film proper. You can check out all the details. All right, man. So, it would be cool if we can get. Uh, sorry, a special. Oh, uh, no, go ahead. You know how sometimes they team up with Mondo and they put out those really awesome posters. It'd be cool if we can get yeah. a special, uh, Justice League, you know, one-off poster, Batman on film. Yeah. That would be cool. Maybe we can. Yeah, that's yeah. Connect and with those guys. We're, we're, we're gonna go to brunch at South Congress Cafe. The, se- the it's the best Bloody Mary in the world. It's better than my mix, and I and I love my mix. South. I've been Mi- there. Good spot. Yeah, it's cool. It's, Not it's a cool good spot, casual, so. but it's just a perfect little austin spot i gotta take you to uh justin i gotta take you to um uh schultz um garden which i love this is a little german place it's like 150 years old and it's right by the capital and a lot of a lot of lawmakers and will and deal there but it's very it's really cool you ever been to schultz rick uh, yeah, you know Marty's been there a lot when yeah. she was when she was in school there. I love that spot. Um, all right. Yeah. Well, all right. Of, so uh, almost like a Seinfeld okay. episode, a whole thirty minutes of nothing there, but it was some good <laughs> nothing. I will say that. Okay, we'll talk That's, a little. That is the show. Yeah, it is. Right. We'll talk a little Batman here. Um, one of the things I, I I don't like this because you know if a filmmaker and actor is out promoting a film. I want them to be able to talk about that film and not something else that's up, you know, coming up or something they've done previously. 
And of course, you know, War for the Planet of the Apes is coming out, and Matt Reeves is out doing, um, he's on the press junket uh, promoting that film, and he's getting asked about the Batman. So, but he has responded a little bit. He hasn't talked, he hasn't spoken too much, but um, there were three different quotes I wanted to bring up we can discuss here and see what we all think. Uh, the first one is, is, I don't know, a week or so old. He talks about, um, here's what he says, and then we can react. He says, in all of my films, what I try to do in almost Hitchcockian sense is use the camera and use the storytelling so that you become the character and you emphasize with that point of view. I think there's a chance to do all, an almost nor, nor driven mm. detective version of Batman that is point of view driven in a very, very powerful way that hopefully is going to connect you to what's going on inside his head and inside his heart. All right, boys. Rick, what do you think? You're a thespian. Well, I, I mean, first of all, I agree with you um, in terms of just let people do their thing and promote their movie. I guarantee you that Nolan's going to be very selective about interviews he does because he knows he's going to get asked about all this stuff, and he doesn't. You, we know he doesn't want to talk about it. Well, he shuts that shit down quick, so yeah, he does. will give him that. He so. does. All right, and he'll tell them beforehand. I'm sure. Like, if you go there, I'm not going to talk about it. So just don't go there. But what do I think about that? I mean, look. I think that that sounds cool. I mean, um, I would love to see something when you talk about film noir or whatever. Like, I always kind of think of that as a little bit of a uh, the, the term has meaning, but oftentimes it's misused. And what exactly does he mean by that? It should be interesting. He's a he's a very crafty filmmaker. Uh, I would love to explore the detective aspect of Batman. Although I think that that has been in films more than people give it credit for. I agree with that. Yeah. Including, including the original Batman, I might, add, I might add, and particularly the Dark Knight trilogy. And of course there's quite a bit of it going on in BBS to BBS's credit. So when people talk about, we've never seen detective Batman or they say it's only been in BBS. I'm like nonsense, but whatever. Um, but still, you know that if we want to explore that even more, I'm, I'm down. I think that's great. Um, I, I like that he talks about uh, the Nolan verse because I love that frame of reference. There's, there's always going to be certain films that uh, and filmmakers that will get me excited of, of another filmmaker uses them as a frame of reference. Mm -hmm. Like what Patty Jenkins was doing that with talking about Richard Donner's um, Superman and Nolan was also talking about Richard Donner's Superman with Batman Begins. And look at what we have. We have Batman Begins and Wonder Woman, two kick-ass comic book films right so i like that he's referencing nolan i think that's i think that's solid um and he talks about heart and heart is been missing um up until wonder woman you know wonder woman has a lot of heart mm -hmm. the uh, the other dc dceu films I, there, there's some heart in man of steel uh for sure mm -hmm. there i don't want i don't want to claim there's not any there there's not very much in, in bvs very little and uh and obviously in suicide squad i mean I don't know. Is there heart in that film? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, there's there's character moments. Yeah, there's some moments, but yeah. just just heart, you know, and the feels, as we like to say. Yeah. And Wonder Woman gives me feels, and Batman again gave me feels. Superman the movie gave me feels, and if that's what Matt Reeves is going after, I'm I'm, I'm saying all for it, you mm -hmm. know. Um, that's really all I can say about it. Is that look, I'm excited for him to be the director. I love everything that he's saying. These little tidbits that he's dropping. I just personally hope that Affleck is going to do it and that it's going to get done and it's going to be awesome. Yeah. What do you think, Justin, about a, a nor driven, uh, you know, Hitchcockian detective type movie? Is that something you would like to see explored in the Batman? Yeah. I mean, that's kind of, I think that is Batman when you break it down to, yeah. to what you want to see on film. Um, especially in the context of the DCEU. Um, again, I'm cool with Batman being a part of the Justice League, but in his own movie, I want it to be a little more, I want it to be smaller. Um, I would love for it to, of course, it's not going to have a small budget, but it'd be great if he had the confines of a smaller budget to tell a smaller story. Because um, I think the smaller stories affect you more. Um, they're more personal. And uh, uh, when, I, when I was reading this, I was like, well, he knows what he's talking about. We're just going to like, you know, speculate you know i would love for this to uh be telling the story of you know robin um 
and not in it making it a Robin story, but how that affects him. Like you start talking about the heart, you know, in essence, Robin is his son, you know, and how does he mm-hmm. deal with, you know, one Robin leaving, one Robin dying. And, you know, I don't I don't know where the heck they're going with it. And I don't know what Robins exist in this universe, but um, I'd be, oh, be interested Justin, to see that. You know, that's that's awesome, dude. You know, it so, gave me chills. Hey, about they, that. see, you know, oh, I'm working on the story with them, so. Yeah. No. <laughs> I, like that a lot. I like that a lot. You have you maybe maybe you have Nightwing, and then he's dealing with the death of Jason Todd or whatever. Mm-hmm. There's his moral ambiguity. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, so, good stuff. Dude. Yeah, and you know, and that could that could also like you know, hey, this this is why he went bananas in, in BVS. I don't know if he wants to go back that way or just you know start a, start a whole other story. You know, but uh, I, I just. That, I like it. There's nothing that he said there that um, a it was a good answer to give like, hey, it kind of tying into everything that he's doing and giving us a little bit of that Batman thing, because he's probably I think he's prepped for the the interview circuit to like, man, they're going to ask me about Batman. So let me try to give my my bucket answer and at the same time talk about everything I'm doing, because, you know, he makes the reference and all the films that I do. I'm, I, I'm trying to approach it in this sense. And so um so yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, what he said is great, and of course, you know, talk about the films people love. People love the Nolan films. People loved, um, you know, even Nolan said when he was putting his movies out. You know, he, he, like you said, the Donner stuff. You know, those are the things that have touched us, and we're gonna be. When you make art, you get inspired by you know previous versions. You know, so you're always gonna take something from your influences, and so that's great. You know, he's he's already putting you know the pedigree out there that, you know, this is what hasn't excited me. This is what is going to inform my decision. So I like that. And if he's thinking bigger, like if he's thinking past one film and he's thinking, Hey, I want to make a trilogy or, or whatever. Great. That means he's got a grand story to tell. So, um, I'm just, I can't wait until the floodgates open on this because that's, you know, it takes me back to classic Batman on film. Like what's going to happen. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, well, Speaking of Nolan, and here's what he said about, really about, well, he it kind of, he's referring back to what Chris Nolan did with the Dark Knight trilogy. And he says, what, what I love that Nolan did was that he took, he took the genre seriously. Yeah. Uh, he's, and he continues on, he makes some comparisons to uh, Batman and Planet of the Apes and Caesar and Batman. And um, he, and he said, you know, the, the the metaphors you can use, and I'm paraphrasing a little bit, enable you to tell stories that have deep emotional resonance. Uh, that's what actually what excites me about it. I think the other thing that I really admire and what Nolan did was knowing what it is to make a big studio film, which often can fall into that sense of committee filmmaking where there's an, an anonymity to the point a view of the film. That's that's interesting right there. Mm. So I I yes, you take Batman seriously and you know and and Chris did do that. He did do the okay, yeah, this is a comic book superhero film, but I'm going to make it like a, like it's you know, flipping Godfather or whatever, you know. Uh, take it seriously and I, I think I I think Batman Begins is probably the first to do that and I think it it made it made this genre it really made it more legitimate in the eyes of a lot of a lot of people, and yeah. and and I, and I I think that's what he's saying here. He's he, to me, he said he's he's thankful and he admires what no one did because he can take now he can take take on a Batman project and go into it like I'm going to do some serious filmmaking here. You're not saying I'm going to make popcorn fluff that because it's a superhero comic book film. So at least that's the way I, I interpret it. So yeah. Uh, what do you, what, Justin, you're, you sound like you got something to say about that. So go right on ahead. Yeah, sir. no, I, I, I'm just agreeing. I, I think I kind of already, you know, kind of said that I, it's, you know, going down that same road that, that Nolan went, you know, bringing, bringing a different point like rick was talking was off air we were talking about like you know how, you know spider-man movie and how it's not you know it, it can never be the same as uh the dark knight and i agree with that mm-hmm. to an extent where batman can always be batman has the ability to be told in different ways you can go from batman brave and the bold you can go you know classic batman adam west 66 to yes. you know you know to dark knight to, to what nolan's doing and right. he's more he's more versatile. Yes. Yeah. Well, Spider Man. If, yeah. if you go serious, you you 
you see what happens. You have that amazing Spider-Man movie that came out with Andrew Garfield, and I just don't think it hit the notes. It didn't hit the notes that you want with a Spider-Man film. No, Spider-Man it didn't, tends that, that to didn't be feel like Spider-Man. Yeah, it, it, Spider-Man needs to be fun. There needs to be the quips. There needs to be the lightheartedness. Now there's 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 drama, which makes that's who Spider-Man is. There is a lot of drama in his films, but you can't be so earnest with it. I think there's a disconnect when you try to make it uh, when you try to Nolanize it like they I think they were trying to do that with the amazing Spider-Man. And I don't mm-hmm. think it worked. There was mm-hmm. just the disconnect. Now, with Batman, he's versatile. You you can do that. And it's just that's, you know, the character he stretches in all those ways. And so I like that. You know, Nolan did. He he did kind of legitimize not just Batman, but I think the genre of the genre, superhero. Yes. You know? Yeah, and yeah. that's what I like that Matt Reeves was saying is I'm taking this as it's it's not like I'm just doing a Batman film, but it, I'm working on one of the, you know, one of the most loved, beloved characters in, you know, American history, right? And in, in the world. Yeah. <laughs> and yes. I'm gonna I wanna live up to the expectations that have been set before me. That's kind of what I took from that. Yeah, because that's that's a daunting task, you know, and going back to Affleck, man, he was trying to, you know, live up to that. And, uh, you know, with everything else going on, that's probably why he had to drop out. And Reeves is trying to step up to that plate. And I'm excited for it sounds like he's got a plan and he he's ready to honor what has come before. So, yeah, that's just my thoughts. I I said it could be like the Gone Girl of Batman movies. Yeah, Yeah. (laughs) you know, I said before that I think. Ben directing Batman was doomed from the beginning because everyone expected it to happen. Mm-hmm. And I don't think he had a story. I think that's the bottom line. I think, you know, there's a, there was a lot of other stuff going on. We all know, know mm-hmm. that in, in the, uh, you know, surrounding him personally and professionally. But I, I don't think he had a story. Yeah. We're telling and just finally said, I don't, you know, I don't have a film to tell. And, and you know what? So, hey, b- b- bravo to him for. If that's the way it played out, and he just said, I don't have a story, bring somebody else in here, you know, good. Mm-hmm. That's, you know, that's, I, that's brave to do to me, to, you know, because he could have just made the film because everyone expected it to happen and it could have been shit. Yeah. So, you know, now we have Matt Reeves and I'm going to get to that in a second. I got uh, some thoughts about that. So let's go to uh, Rick. Go ahead. Do you have anything to add about his Nolan comments? You kind of, you kind of alluded to it um, earlier anyway. No, I mean, I think I said everything I needed to yeah. say, and Justin wrapped it up nicely. So, no, I, I just, I'm just hoping for a good film, and I'm, I'm hoping that Affleck does it. Yeah. So, that's which, a by the way, he's still not confirmed. That's <laughs> just a complete. That's, that that is absolutely untrue for anyone to say he's confirmed. He's not. It is. He is not confirmed. And I want to also say this, and I will replay this a million times. We have never said he's not doing it. We've always said that we hope that he does. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I still stand by my 60-40. I think 60% chance he's going to. I, I screwed up in the last podcast in one section. I said that backwards, but I've, I've been consistent on that 60-40. And I just hope that that 60% proves, prevails. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with <clears throat> you. And you're correct. Um, because you know, I, you know what's going to happen. He's going to do it, which is going to be awesome. And then we're going to get... Bad Bell Films say, what you going to do? Like, no, we no, never, said, never said that. <laughs> not once. Not even. We want him not, to do it. <laughs> not one time. I'm just telling you he's not confirmed. And don't be surprised if he doesn't do it. That's we all. Did that whole, we did a whole show about, you know, the stories that went out. Oh, Matt Reeves just confirmed. No, he didn't confirm anything. Did but you he sent a he tweet said? that said, welcome to the back. Hey, that, that, make, that makes my head spin when people say that. I'm like, wow. I go, you... Okay. I don't. I don't want to re- relitigate all this stuff. But I do, want to just, yeah. I do just want to, this that's, one that's, little thing. Yeah, that's that's like, you know, little. it's it, it. It makes people excited. There's that. There's the yeah, side there, of the spectrum where like, they, oh, that's, that's right. cool, but don't look too far into that because right. you'll be disappointed. That's right. He you went know? on national television and said specifically stated he's directing it, and then he yeah. wasn't. Don't take a tweet as 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 gospel. But anyway, let's move on from that. I just hope he does it, and if he doesn't do it. Then I hope that Reeves does goes back and does like a prequel and and uh, doesn't just like recast him per se in the same stage of his life that Ben Affleck's Batman's in. Yeah. Um, so we'll see. Uh, either way, I think that it's going to be a, a great movie, and uh, I think the odds are still in our favor that Affleck will do it. Anyway, go okay. ahead, Bill. Yeah, we're not going to go down that rabbit hole. Other than to say yes, we never said he wasn't going to do it, and we did a whole show about 
Matt Reeves, you know, saying, yeah, yeah, right now, yeah, that's the plan right now. And then everyone, okay, I'm not going down a rabbit hole. Just go listen to the podcast if you want to, <laughs> what we had to say about it. All right, so uh, last little bit here from Reeves. Of course, someone asked him if he had a, you know, a trilogy planned. And he says, I have ideas about an arc, but really the, the important thing is just to start. You have to start with the first one. You know, you have to start with a story that begins something. And then he talks about, you know, the process of doing, when he went to start at uh, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes and so forth. Um, and he said, uh, blah, blah, blah. Preparing. Um, okay, basically what he's saying is, you know, he's got ideas, but you got to start, you got to have a, a, a good, you know, this first film has got to be good. Okay, you you can't start thinking about, Okay, I'm going to do this in part one, this in the middle, and then this in the finale, and we're going to save this for that. So to me, it reminds me a little bit of what Chris Nolan always said about, he said, you tell his brother, Jonathan and, and Goyer, when they were coming up with stories and writing the screenplay, don't, don't save anything. Mm -hmm. don't, don't hold anything back. Um, tell the story you want to tell. Sequels will take care of themselves. If there, if there's, if it's meant to be. And mm -hmm. I, I kind of get that from here is that, look, we're going to make this film. We're going to put everything into this film right here, the Batman or whatever in hell it ends up being called. And, you know, we'll go from there because you got to start with a good story first, you yeah. know, this first one here. Uh, that's the way I took it. Um, anybody have a different interpretation of, of that or? No, I think, I thoughts? think that's fair. And, and, and I want to just say this one thing here and I don't mean to, question the integrity of the statements made by the Nolans or whatever. And I, and I believe that I believe that all those films were for the most part, individual projects that, that uh, he said, this is this story. And then, you know, if I get to another one, I get to another one, but let's, let's be real though. I mean, he did set each one up for the next one. I mean, that was a very conscious thing, whether it was the end of Batman begins or especially the end of the dark Knight. So I think there's probably a little bit of spin on that from those guys, but I think overwhelmingly the, the message that they're getting across is that you treat these as individual pictures. Mm -hmm. If you, if you have a big story arc in your head that it could go, you know, obviously have that in place. Yeah. Uh, because again, each, each of the Batman begins and the dark Knight ended in a very specific manner. And th those were setups, but they were setups very s smartly done. <laughs> if I may say so. In other words, they could have just been in a vacuum. Um, and uh, if they just didn't want to get around to it or they just weren't inspired. And I think that was the brilliance of those films is that it still set it up. And yet at the same time, it it could have just ended there and, and it just would have been what it was. So well, hey, listen, I'm going to me, me, I'm gonna push back a little bit on that, Rick. I, I will say, yes, there Batman begins ended with the Joker card. So, yes. We and, knew and, that, and, and, and escalation. And, you know, yeah. And the Joker was going to be in it, yeah. but the, the story that became the dark Knight was derived out of that being in Batman begins. The story was not, he didn't have the story already. And he, and then he put that Joker card moment in begins so he could tell the story that he already had. He didn't have the story. The story came organically after the fact. And mm -hmm. the same thing for Dark Knight Rises. But I, I, I don't, I'm not disagreeing with that. Yeah. I'm just saying that I don't believe that. Well, I, I'll give you an example. In mind is what I'm saying. Okay. So part of their, you know, brainstorming was for the trilogy was that Harvey Dent wasn't going to die in the middle movie. And, well, you know, the Dark Knight. That, you know, um, and that changed because it became that. Harvey's arc had to be told, you know, his downfall, everything had to be told to, to, to make that story. Mm -hmm. So they didn't, you know, you could have very easily said, okay, and I, there's a lot of criticism. I remember uh, back in 2008, uh, you know, you shouldn't have killed Two-Face, leave him for the, be the villain in part three. Well, that's not what the story required. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's what I'm saying. So I'm not saying that there's not, there weren't parts um, I, I don't think, here's what I'm saying. I don't, I, I, I believe that they, the story for each, for, for the Dark Knight and for Dark Knight Rises 
were organic and they they came from what happened in the film prior. It was there was they weren't already set up and the film prior had to adjust to account for what they want to do in the next one. That's what I mean when 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 he when he says don't save everything, you know, don't don't save something if you need it, put it in the film, okay? Don't save it for a sequel. So, anyway, that's my Yeah. Well, you know, you think Batman round. Begins it, was it, Batman Begins was the gamble, you know, like, hey, we're going to do this. Who knows? It's post Batman and Robin. You yeah. know, they it didn't light the world on fire, but everyone no. who saw it at the end, you kind of got, whoa, what's going on? That Joker reveal hit everybody, you know, especially if you weren't spoiled on it. And then once it hit video, people there was like mm-hmm. a buzz going. So at that point, you know, you have this ability to start, you know, crafting your Joker story. You know, you, you can't you could have had Batman Begins and never did another movie. And then that was the ending. And you kind of draw your own conclusions. You know, it was, it was, it was a ending, but with the idea of like, all right, Batman's going to go on some other adventures, you know? And then the follow up is whatever, you know, no one wanted it to be. I think the, the hardest part of those movies, sorry, I don't mean to get on a tangent is dark Knight rises is the one that's like, man, how do you top dark Knight? You know? Mm -hmm. Um, so, and I, everything else that went in there, you know? You don't try to. You you tell a, a very intriguing yeah. story about Bruce Wayne, mm-hmm. and you introduce Robin in a very unique twenty first twenty first century fashion. <laughs> Boo! Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we still got to get to that Rises podcast here. Yeah. Well, right, we're Whoa. doing it because uh, Rises is five years old here. You know what? And I got some. What are those memory things on Facebook? You know, eight years ago this happened, and yeah. Whatever, I saw and that. I had a bunch pop up from when I was in uh, Beverly Hills at the junket, and also I went to the. I got invited to go see his little. Um, what is that? What's the Chinese theater? Is it Man's now? Yeah. Gra- it was yeah, Man's Chinese. Yeah, it used it to be Grauman's. Grauman's back in the day. Yeah, yeah. it goes back. Uh, so forth. I got invited to that to see him stick his hand and cement. That's a good Texas way to say cement. 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 My wife makes fun of me all the time. <laughs> I say it. It's been cool. Your wife's been posting a lot of that Batman on film stuff too. Lately. Yeah, that was that was that was a good time. That was a good. You know, it was it. You know, now you can. You know, we'll talk about that when I talk about rises. But yeah. we're going to do rises. By gosh, we're going to do it this month. I promise. Uh, for the fifth anniversary. So, all right. Anyway, anything to add to. Guys, uh, to kind of finish up with what Matt Reeves has had to say here recently. Now, yeah, I mean, you know what? Has, I'm excited. Well, he has said a lot, but yeah, I'm excited for it too. Go ahead. Yeah, I wonder if he just just to kind of talk about Comic Con a little bit. I know they're talking about uh, Justice League and Aquaman. They've said that, but I wonder if he'll he'll be there. I'm not counting on it, but you know, sometimes these things happen and they'll surprise you. So yeah, it'd be interesting. Um, you know what? At least a title card or something. Yeah, this there's, is the movie's going to be called yeah, this. Or there's part of me that thinks because they did like a big dog and pony show last year, mm-hmm. and it kind of came back and bit them in the rear end. So I'm wondering if they're more low key this time around. Like I, I know they're doing the Justice League panel. They're probably going to do this, they'll do something with Aquaman. Mm-hmm. And if you're listening, I know because I got a um, uh, information from Warner Brothers and DC Entertainment. There, the the the, the cast of the Justice League, who will be there. I'm not sure who's all going to be there because they're still filming quote-unquote reshoots slash additional photography in the UK as we speak. How long did that, was that supposed to last there, Rick? About uh, two weeks. Okay. That's, everything was, you know, everything was fine. Everything was just as planned. There's only minor, minor things they were going to reshoot. We're going on, now we're about halfway into the second month. I said two and a half months, so we'll see what happens. Anyway, um, so they're going to be there doing autographs Saturday mm-hmm. in, in the DC area, uh, area of, of the main floor. And so FYI, if you're going to be out there at Comic-Con, I am not going, I have my press pass. I just, you know, my wife had surgery and all this stuff. And, you know, I, I him and hauled about it. It is, I, I just, I just said I can't pull the trigger on it this year. It's too much. Too much. I'm, I'm going to miss you, know, you, man. I know. Yeah, I'm going to go to Gaslamp and get pizza by myself. Good. I will. Uh, <laughs> anything that I, I'll try to hook you up with some stuff. Maybe we'll get something. Um, 
I don't think they're going to do press, though. I'll find out. If they do press, I'll get you in there. So we'll see. All right, boys. Uh, let's let's give away those tickets there, Justin. Oh, man. Okay, so I'm going to keep this really simple for everybody because, A, I don't, I don't want to do some type of a trivia question thing. I'm just going to say the – because I have five pairs of tickets to give away to this Batman the Movie tribute to Adam West here, July 15th at the Fox Performing Arts Center. It's going to be fun. They're going to have go-go dancers. They're going to have a bat band. They're going to have DJ Galactic Ray. Uh, and there's going to be stuff for the kids as well. So it's it's really for everybody. But it's in California. So if you're in the Los Angeles area, it's about 50 minutes out from, from L.A. proper. Um, but I'm going to give out five tickets. And from the first you hear this, the first five people to email me at jkowalski at Batman on film.com that's batman dash on dash film.com you'll be welcomed into the party it'll be that simple so the first five people to email me and you have to come because this is it's got my name on it it's got batman on film's name on it and you will have tickets at the door for you you will be on wheel call so just email me and i will um get you in the first five people so yes you should spell your last name sir yeah i'm gonna do it one more time j k o w a l s k i at Batman dash on dash film dot com. You can so put it's that five on, uh, pairs of tickets, right? So it's it's five tickets. pairs. So yeah, each person will get one. We'll get two tickets each. Dude, I wish I was. Okay. I wish I could make it out. Yeah, that'd be cool. Um, make sure I'll, just, you can, Justin. You'll, I'm sure you'll post it on. Tw- you'll tweet it yeah, out. I'll, I'll tweet it out as well. That. Okay. And please, if don't ask for them if you're not going to go. Yeah. Okay. Like Justin said, that's the only thing we would ask of you. If you can, if you're there, you're in the, you're in Southern California, you can make it. Or hell, if you're flying in, whatever. You know, <laughs> Maybe whatever. Tom will come out. Yeah. From England. <laughs> <laughs> if if you're going to attend, and you if you get the tickets, you'll attend. Please, uh, uh, be the ones who to to uh, email Justin and don't now if you're. If you're in uh, Duluth, Minnesota, and you have no intention of going to this, and you're just doing it for fun, don't, don't, uh, please don't. Yeah, so, yeah. The yeah. Batmobile is going to be on site too. I mean, cool. trying to sweeten the deal there. Very good. And you're going to be doing video and all that stuff. We'll have on. Yeah, we'll be, I have be, a guy. Oh, He'll be filming. Yeah, I'll be looking so. forward to that. Okay, so, all right, Ricky Joe from Mesquite, Texas. <laughs> what, what's going on, man? Plug, you plug some stuff. Uh, plug. Follow me on Twitter, Shoe Rick S H E W R I C K. If you're into politics, uh, go over to Left Shoe Politics. That's S H E W. Subscribe to my our YouTube channel, please. And uh, the latest podcast is up. It's called a domestic mailbag show. Right? It's just Jeremy and I. Um, Mr. Malloy's not with us, and no guest. We just uh, we we rant a little bit about some th- some things, and we just take a bunch of questions. It's a good show. Yeah, it was so good. Please, yeah, yeah. Thank you. It was. I thought that I, I enjoyed the format. We had never done that before. So yeah. please uh, please go over and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Follow me on Twitter, and uh, hopefully here in a few months, I'll be plugging a, a new uh, bar restaurant in Dallas somewhere. Hey, all right. I'm, I'm working a- on it. Yeah, uh, just follow me on Twitter at J underscore Rocca, and we can debate and talk on Twitter and have long, long-winded rants about pop culture and movies and John Blake. That'd be really fun. And then uh, putting out episodes every week of the Let's Go Comic Show. So if you want to check that out, just follow at Let's Go Comic Show on Twitter, and we can go to the website letsgocast.com where we have another show that comes out a little you know every other month or something like now but right now the let's go comic show is the one that um we're putting most of the work into so if you want to listen to that give it a give it a download and let me know subscribe that'd be amazing all right very good oh one thing about our come comic book movie slash superhero movie greatest scenes list Mm -hmm. um i did not restrict it to the character having to originate from comics. It can be a superhero film that just was a superhero film, but did not, you know, was not a comic book first. Oh, I got to change my list now. Meteor Man, dude. Meteor Man. Uh, I have, I have a scene from Unbreakable in my, on my top 12 candidates. And, uh, I I did not include you know, I'll tell you what, real quick, and we'll make it, I'll let y'all make an executive decision here. 
I'll let y'all decide. You want to include animation? No. Okay. That's where I was at. That was where I was. <laughs> Sorry, at. Ryan. <laughs> I know that that I know Ryan's uh he's always trying to make the net a little wider. Yes. But I think it needs to be film. Yes. Live action film. Yeah. Live action film and it can be, you know, I mean, if you have a you got a scene from Hancock that you think is worthy of being <laughs> And the one of the greatest superhero movies scenes of all time, then you are more than willing to nominate it. But Unbreakable, I have one from Unbreakable. I'll tell you what it is when we do our show. So mm-hmm. that's that, so good. It's that so movie good. is awesome. Yeah, I love that movie. This just came over hot on the wire, by the way. I know we're not a breaking news thing because this is not even a live show, but I'm going to just throw this out there real fast and then it'll be up to you to segue, Bill. and. And uh, yeah. in the show, <laughs> with my interruption, I apologize. But anyway, it looks like Spider-Man Homecoming is now tied with Iron Man and the Dark Knight as the highest uh, rating on Rotten Tomatoes of a superhero film. The, all, all three of them are at 94%. The original Iron Man, the Dark Knight, and uh, Spider-Man Homecoming. Well, it's, it's worthy of that. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, actually. Oh, look at this. I left one out. It is actually, there's a four-way tie. It is Spider-Man Homecoming, Spider-Man 2, Iron Man, and the Dark Knight. I'm, d- yeah. I'm down with that. Yeah. Hey, Spider-Man, you gotta give you got to give Spider-Man credit. He has two films on that list. So that's cool. Yeah. Well, all would be in my top ten. Iron Man's in my top ten. Dark Knight is in my top ten. Spider-Man 2 is in my top ten. I can't put Homecoming in there yet, so... Mm-hmm. All right, we're going right back. We're going full circle back yeah. to that from the beginning. Hey, and I also want to give a shout out to Ryan and his wife. Yes. And congratulations to baby Nora. That's, Nora. That is awesome. So yep. Ryan was texting me last night, one o'clock my time, which means <laughs> it's like oh four yeah. in the morning his time. Yeah. He's like, yeah. you got to feed babies three times a night or every, yeah. every, every three <laughs> hours or whatever. And I like glanced at it and just kind of laughed. I said, "You need to start binge watching a TV show, man." That's what I did. Oh man, it's gonna. <laughs> you know, Ryan. Um, not to, not to get into like you know, but for an, all parents out there, you know, my we did, I didn't actually have to do that for the first few months because they were all they were all on mama the whole time. Yeah, that was a, that was just a, the way we did it. But uh, but I just remember having to like feed them when they started eating solid foods. That's when dad stepped in. And boy, that's a task. <laughs> yeah, being a, being a parent's not easy, is it? Mm-mm. Oh, but it's great. It's yes. freaking great. Yeah, wait till they. Well, wait till they get older, boys and girls. Oh, boys, just it never ends. Let me put it to you that that's all I'm going to say. It never ends. It never ends. <laughs> never ends. You know, hell, it didn't even even end for me. I still depending on my mom when I was in my forties and. I don't want to get in a whole different tangent about parents. Well, now we've talked about Ozzy pissing on the Alamo and breastfeeding. Anything else we want yes, to talk about before no. we wrap the show? No, we're going to we're going to wrap the show. We're going to have let's talk about you know grunge music. <laughs> talk about gravy. <laughs> no. All right. Oh, gravy. What's the best gravy, Rick? Uh, <laughs> the best gravy is my um, Real gravy. No, it, well, it's it's my gravy. It's my red wine uh, pepper gravy. Okay. So, sorry. Man, Rick and his fancy stuff. My red wine pepper gravy. Okay. It's delish. What, what do you do? How do you make that? Uh, well, I, I just, because I, I cook, you know, I cook, so. Yeah, yeah. so, I mean. Yeah, man. I, you guys both. I, I, I make my gravy with, like, you know, like, true beef base. Not, like, okay. right? So, you I make I, a, I, you, go, you make a roux with this, or? Yes, exactly. Okay. All right. Uh, you know, I, I get that going with hot water, start adding the flour, Peppers, extra seasonings, red wine, okay. and then you know, just like making a bernays or anything else, it's okay. just all about it's all about that stir, and yep. you got to get that risk going for you got to be patient with it. You got to give it you got to give it some love, like like just like Justin's granny's pie that she used to make. By the way, your <laughs> your tweet on Baby Driver was so awesome, dude. I love it. Oh yeah, dude, that movie was a good movie. If you yeah, haven't I can't. seen. Do yeah. you remember your tweet? Because I don't want to butcher it, but there's something, uh, about, something about something with love. He makes me right love. crafting it with love and just how I don't know. He liked it though. He liked two of my, my tweets, which yeah. means yeah. nothing, but it was cool. 
It does mean something. That is cool. No, I know. It was just you, sometimes you're like, ah, some, he tweeted me, but, you know, he's probably. Well, yeah, what you, what you don't do in those situations, if you're listening, is you don't, like, quote that and then tag that person and say, hey, thanks for the like, Mr. Director. That's that's cheesy. But Yeah, I just, I just poke fun at it and, you know, I had someone say, what does that mean? It, it doesn't mean anything. <laughs> I literally put it. It means absolutely I, nothing. <laughs> All right, so we have we have no way to really end the show at this point, Bill, because it's complete rambling. Oh, so it's, okay, okay, I'm gonna end it now. I'm gonna say real quick. Yes, congratulations, Ryan. Welcome to the club. Uh, your life will never be the same, <laughs> uh, and it goes by fast, 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 much faster than than you than you're going to realize. So when you're getting up and feeding the baby, and you're going, oh, this never ends. Oh yeah, it ends, and it goes yeah. by quicker than you can imagine i mean my i can remember feeding my 22 year old daughter when she was and I, like i was sitting now she's 22 years old today so oh, um, man well, happy birthday shout out yes yeah, shout out happy to birthday. uh announcer rachel for really uh going through that surgery and really kicking ass i mean she was in uh you know just it's it's a uh, Shows you how good a shape she was in, how tough she is to to bounce back. She's just now waiting on the doctor to to release her, and uh, I'm having to do everything. I mean everything, and and I have a much and I, I never not did not appreciate my wife, but I have a newfound appreciation for everything she does because I was like like I told Ricky, I said I'm just worn out, man, because I'm. Cause I'm doing you know, i'm doing everything but i don't mind doing it i'm and i don't mind her sitting around and but she's not just sitting around she's up moving around and stuff you know i mean she was like one to she'll get on the treadmill at the house and run for she'll come out two two three hours later and go oh, i just knocked out 13 miles you know that was almost every weekend and and so now just you know walking around the blocks it's gotten to be you know that's that's a big accomplishment for the surgery she had so anyway mm-hmm. I mean to ramble on about announcer Rachel. No, but I think that's a uh, announcer Rachel, yeah. and she'll take us out. Let, why don't Why don't yeah. we end the show like this real quick? And we're gonna have announcer Rachel take us out. We we all love her and we're glad she's okay. We gave her a big shout out on the last Left Shoe podcast yes. that I plugged earlier as well, and we went out with Rachel's song. So check that out. But um, let's go around the circle real quick. Justin, what is your favorite cinematic bat suit? Go! Oh my god, are you kidding me? Uh, go. Go. I I love the Batman versus Superman suit. I think they did a great job. Uh, but there's love in my heart for that Keaton suit from '89. I still that's kind of a that's my first cinematic Batman love right there. I love that suit. So me too. And that cinematic suit in '89 is superior to the one that he had in Returns because the one in '89 looked he looked like a panther. It was like it was strong, and the one in and returns like he could just rip it. In fact, when he ta- when he tears his mask, <laughs> when he rips his mask. I, like, I, just, part. I just expected him to do it, and then all of a sudden his eye makeup's gone. So, yeah, yeah, I always hated that. Yeah, yeah. So, Bill, favorite Batman on film suit? Mm. That's why are you doing this to me? Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna end on a Batman. We're just gonna end on a Batman. Now. I like all of them except for the, and I just had it in my mailbag. I I, I do not like the the freeze. Yeah, blue silver thing in Batman and Robin. Oh, if I had to pick a favorite, oh my gosh, um, the Val- the original Val Kilmer suit that you took the nipples off is pretty kick ass too. Yeah, yeah. The, the Panther suit. Yeah, they yeah. call that one the Panther suit. Um, man, golly, um, the Adam West suit. Okay, all right, there you there go. You go. My, my right. favorite. Okay, this is tricky. It's the Batman Begins suit, but it's actually in the Dark Knight, and it's—I don't know if they changed it at all, but it's just the way it's shot. Mm-hmm. And like at the beginning of the film, when he walks in and he's talking to Gordon, he's scanning the money, and he's like, you know, he's like, you know, one guy or the entire mob. Mm-hmm. Just that scene, the way he looks, is just—he's yeah. he, gorgeous. Yeah, I like that. I, I agree. Um, I saw him, I saw that scene being filmed. Did I tell y'all that before? Yeah. 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 That That's took- awesome. Four hours of filming. Wow, Does, that, that doesn't surprise me. And how and how long is it in Batman Begins? Twenty maybe. seconds. Yeah, a few minutes. Maybe, maybe a minute or two. May, maybe that whole scene's a minute from the moment that he's yeah. out the door and he's standing there. Someone time it. I want to know. <laughs> do, you, do you trust him? Yeah. Tweet it out. Yeah. And, and oh, I, I I had never seen filmmaking before, honestly. So that just blew my mind that. I thought it was going to be some huge scene, and then I saw it in the movie. I'm like, oh my god, that was like four hours. 
Yeah. You know? Yeah. Four yeah. hours. So, um, and there's so, almost so much, you know, he tosses, uh, and it's not in the, uh, didn't make the movie, he, he tosses the money to Gordon. That was supposed to be how he got, got the bills. But uh, Gary Oldman kept dropping it. And so... <laughs> I guess they just they whatever they cut it out when they made when they did the editing. All right, so that's well, it's been a hell of a show, hasn't it? So, announcer Rachel will take us out. Thanks for listening. Bye for now. Hey now, you've been listening to the Batman on Film podcast, a proud member and the sponsor of the Batman Podcast Network, BatmanPodcastNetwork.com. You can listen to the BOF podcast on iTunes, YouTube, Stitcher, Google Play Music, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, TuneIn, and wherever good podcasts like this one can be found. Want to advertise on the BOF podcast? Go to AdvertiseCast.com slash the Batman on Film Con podcast. Follow Jet on Twitter at Batman on Film and on BOF's Facebook fan page at Facebook.com slash Jet dot Batman on Film. Email Jet via Jet at Batman-On-Film.com. Follow Rick on Twitter at Shoe Rick and on Facebook at Facebook.com slash B-O-F dash Shoe. For Jet, Rick, Justin, and Ryan, I'm announcer Rachel. Thanks for listening.